Greetings everybody, this is Sliced Lime, and I am here with another tutorial. I started making a device that required me to know if it is raining or not. So, a rain sensor, if you will, and it turned out to be much more difficult than it, uh, than it should be. I would have thought that there would be a slash weather query or something like that, like there is a slash time query, but there isn't. And it turns out that it's surprisingly hard to know whether it's raining or not. So I've created a new world here and we're gonna, from scratch, be showing how to make a fully reliable rain sensor with command blocks. So this is gonna be based on fire and let's start off by showing a bit about how fire works. And that also means that we are in a forest biome here, which is fine. Uh, what you need for this to work is you need it to place it in your spawn chunks, but you also need to make sure that it is uh, in somewhere where it can rain. So let's start out by taking a look a bit in depth on how fire works. So let's light this block on fire. We have this plank block next to it. And what we're going to see happen is this fire will consume the wood. Sooner or later. <laughs> So you see one of the wood blocks disappeared, but the fire is still burning. So it will consume one block at a time, and as long as there's another block next to it, it will keep burning. So as long as I keep replacing these blocks as the fire burns, it will keep burning. However, if I do toggle downfall here, it immediately goes out. And that is despite there being a block of combustible material left here. That's what we're going to be using to figure out if it's raining or not. And uh, we're going to need a few things. We're going to... Let's just do game rule uh, daylight cycle false to start off with. And game rule command block output false. Because we're going to be running a fill clock here. Give myself a command block. Let's grab a redstone block too. And let's see, let's, let's put it this way. Uh, maybe here. Lots of trees in the way. So, we're only going to need a few blocks here. Uh, this is positive X, good. Kick this off. Now we have a fill clock here, and we're gonna need. We're also gonna need a few other things. Let's clear out some space here. So, a scoreboard objectives add. It's raining, dummy. So we're gonna have a scoreboard. It's called it's raining, and we're gonna have a certain entity that gets a score in the scoreboard if it is raining. So. Uh, scoreboard objective set display sidebar it's raining so we can see what's going on we're also going to need that entity I talked about so let's do a summon armor stand right here it doesn't matter where this is as long as it's in your spawn chunks and in a place where it can rain and we're going to give it a custom name that is rain check now, if you're going to use this on the server, you probably don't want it visible, so you should probably set it to be invisible and marker, and probably invulnerable as well, if, you're, if there's any risk that somebody comes there and smacks it. Now, let's get to things. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing a fire block at the build limit up in the sky, right above this armor stand here, and we're going to make sure that it continuously has two blocks of wood to feed it, and we're going to check if it's still there. So let's start by an execute command for name equals rain check. So that's our armor stand and in its place we're gonna run a command that is set block one offset to the side at the very build limit planks. Okay now what we want to do is we want to set the score of this rain check armor stand to above zero in the is raining scoreboard if there's no fire in that place. 
So we're essentially going to execute at e name equals brain brain check detect uh, right above it at the build limit. If there's air there, then we're going to do scoreboard players set at e name equals rain check is raining. 40. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be counting this downwards. One step every tick, which means that we need to set it high enough that the random chance that the fire is extinguished will pretty much always happen before the 40 ticks runs out. I've tried 40 and it seems to pretty much always work. I've never seen it fail yet, uh, but you could increase it to 50. 40 is two seconds, so it seems to always happen before that. Now there's one problem with this, and that is the fact that when the plank block underneath the fire is consumed, even though the fire keeps burning, you can't actually detect it there. So we're going to have to uh, do another check here, uh, just to uh, avoid detecting that case, because otherwise you would get false positives and get like it's raining sometimes. And even when it's not raining because it consumed the wood underneath it. So we're going to do detect at high tune of 54, so one block below, and planks. So we only run this command whenever there's planks underneath, underneath it. Um, and then we detect error, and in case there's air there, we're going to assume that it's raining. So the next thing we're going to do is the countdown. So scoreboard players remove. Uh, e name equals rain check score is raining main equals one so whenever it's above one we'll remove one from it so that means it will count down to zero and then it will stay at zero so what you will do when we have this running is you will test for this being one or more you will always get a hit on that if it is actually in fact raining or it stopped less than two seconds ago. Okay, so we need to do two more things before we're done with this. We need to get the fire block in place and we need to get the plank block in place. So execute again at E, name equals rain check in its place, detect if there's an air block at the top of the world. And in that case, we're gonna do set block 255 fire. The reason we don't want to run this always is we don't want to reset any data the game has internally on whether the fire is burning out or not. So we make sure to test it and only set the block in that case. And one more thing and that is execute at e name equals rain check. We do this only to get the block in the correct position. Set block till the 254 till the flanks. So, if we did go ahead and teleport myself up to 254, here we have our little device. It's burning on, as you can see, it will keep burning as long as there is wood there, and there will always be wood there, because we replace the wood there every single tick. Now if I do toggle downfall, you will see that it's raining starts counting down from 40 repeatedly, and it won't hit zero until the rain has stopped. You will see that it counts down. Sometimes it switches up again before it hits 20. Sometimes it counts all the way down to three or something. But this far, I've never ever seen it count all the way to zero. And if we do total downfall again, the rain stops and it counts down to zero. So we can fall back down. Everything that we see here is based off of this simple little command block setup and this armor stand. This command block setup doesn't, the position of this doesn't matter as long as it is in your spawn chunk somewhere. You could put it down in the bedrock layer and all it really needs is a two block fill clock. This armor stand needs to be in your spawn chunk and it also needs to be in a biome where it can rain. However, it could also be down near the bottom of the world or something. All we need is its position.
If you want to then implement uh, a command that is dependent on whether it's raining or not, you could simply do execute at e name equals rain check a score is raining equals zero if you want it to not be raining or score is raining min equals one if you want it to be raining and then string whatever you need off of that. Quite a simple system, quite a lot of knowledge needed to understand exactly why it works. But there you go, rain sensor in vanilla Minecraft with command blocks. Thank you very much for watching, my name is Sliced Lime and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.